In our business news, due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdown that followed, SMEs are complaining to be badly affected by the partial lockdown. The economy witnessing sluggish growth in services, manufacturing, followed by an increase in unemployment, decrease in government revenue, decline in exports and disruption in supply chains have also compounded their business operations. To make us understand the extent of this impact, we're joined live by Skype, Bright Jaja, founder of iCreate Africa. Thank you, Bright Jaja, for joining us. Hello, thank you for having me. What is the impact of COVID-19 on SMEs and skilled workers, or is it a case of existing problems only exacerbated by the unpredict unpredictable circumstances of COVID-19? Um, I think Nigeria is a country that really we don't really work with data because we don't have one, so we can't really state clearly um, the numbers. But looking from America, who's, which, which is a developed country, um, I, I would say over 39, 39 million people lost their job in, in the space of a month. Um, over 70 businesses filed for loans. 70% of the businesses filed for loans. That will tell you how, how insane it is over there. Now, we're talking about a developed country that has data. So coming back to Nigeria, um, there's a lot of young, young entrepreneurs and SMEs that have laid off their staff because they can't afford to pay them. A lot of them. Now, let's also consider the fact that we have already have a huge unemployment rate where we have millions of i think up to 60 or 34 or 40 million people that are unemployed and you now have the situation where smes who basically is the highest employer and let them go of their staff and we now also have the, the independent workers who are daily workers and assistants who try to make a living from doing doing, the, doing daily jobs and they're also they can't they can't get jobs right now so we're looking at probably 100 million people are out of jobs that half the population of nigeria so it's insane it's, it's insane now, Brian, why is it important that we give SMEs and skilled workers priority at this time? I think it's important because um, because of their livelihood, because of security, because of food security, because of, I mean, there's a lot of reasons why. Nigeria is not a country that has, um, that, that has a social system in place where it would say, oh, we can give these guys money to, to be able to take care of themselves. That has happened the past couple of months, and we've not really seen any positive feedback. A lot of people have not been able to get this um, money that they were supposed to give out. So it's important that we find a way, leveraging on technology especially, to get these guys back to work. I think it's possible. I think um, looking at China, for example, I've, I've, we have been doing a lot of studies to see how China you know, was able to open their economy, their economy back and able to get their skilled workers and SMEs back to work. And they leverage heavy, heavily on technology. One of the technologies that they actually, one of the things that, that actually did more is they literally banned the whole I amount mean, of the cash, the, the, the cash exchange because that's one of the ways you can actually pass the virus. So now they're working mostly on, you know, using digital payments like they are, they are, they are the WhatsApp of of, of, uh, of, of China, which is WeChat, to make payments. And also they were able to create platforms, digital marketplaces where where you can connect, you know, skilled workers or SMEs to individuals and their services, whether remotely or physically. So I think we. After now, leverage the technology to find a way to see how we can get these guys back to work. Interesting, you did make mention of ledger, leveraging on technology to solve these problems. How do we do that? Yeah. How can we do that? Um, I, I think it's pretty easy. Um, for example, my company, um, which is, I think, we are, we, are, we are placed with the responsibility to take care of skilled workers, because that's the reason that we took on ourselves for the past few years we've been working on. Um, um, Teaching, getting more people trained, empowering more people to make a of skill training and getting them employed. And we've done that. We've actually trained about 2,500 people who most of them have, have now lost their jobs. So we were pushed uh, to find a, a, a way and a means to get these guys back to work. And that's what we've done. We just created the first ever, I think I want to say if it's the first ever, but I think it's the first ever digital platform, digital marketplace for skilled workers, from graphic designers to, to, to barbers to hairdressers. We have a platform right now where you can actually go and find it. It's just like the Uber for skilled workers. It's called Skillers.ng. So you go to the platform, you create your skills profile. As a company or as an individual, as a client, you can also create your profile and then you can connect. And we, there's a market that connects, you know, the service that you want and the service provider. And I think that's one of the factors we can get these guys back to work. Now, is this just a, a recent thought or before now, have you, have you thought about, have you explored technological solutions prior to this time? And... To what degree? What degree of success would you say that was? This, 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 this was recently. Um, we, when, when, we, when we saw, we kind of saw ahead of time when the, the coronavirus hit China in December and also in January, we, we kind of 
knew that it was going to spread. I mean, well, a lot of people were saying, oh, this is not for black people. It's not going to survive in Nigeria because of the sun and all that. We just stopped, we just started thinking to other direction of treating a digital platform just in case it happened. And I mean, normally it's supposed to take about six months to create such a platform, but we decided to, you know, we actually did a call and um, where we, we worked with some of our, you know, some of our digital, our, our technical, technical partners in, in Silicon Valley, and we were able to get um, coders and, and app developers together on a platform and we discussed with them and told them what we wanted to do and the time frame that we had. And we had volunteers literally from Silicon Valley, from India, coming together to help us create the platform. And now um, we can say that the website is ready while the app is still in development. But this is something that if you go on the platform right now, you can literally see, you know, um, barbers, you see um, cooks, you see hairdressers, you see all of them, you know, some of our skill champions who have already created their profile and they are now being connected to jobs. Finally, Bright, what are some of the challenges of engaging technology in a much more interactive way in the area of business and entrepreneurship? I, I, I think there's a lot of challenges, um, and we are still trying to see how we can figure out how we can you know, navigate through these challenges. One is power. We, we, have, we don't have power in Nigeria, and you need electricity for you to be able to leverage on technology. Second is access to good internet. I mean, I'm struggling right now to make sure that this doesn't go up at some point. Um, I think about four, I think 40 percent of the entire African population have access to the internet, and, and I think about 39 percent have access to, to stable, stable electricity. So I think those are the two major challenges. And then when it comes to technological know-how, people understand how to use mobile application and systems like Zoom and the rest of them. Um, a lot of people don't have the knowledge, but I think what has happened, this situation has kind of forced us to really, really understand technology and leverage on it. Bright Jaja, I create Africa founder. Thank you for joining us on the news and for your insightful contribution. Thank you for, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. We're going to a quick break now, and when we return, more news.